In this GBAC industry alert, I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, the Senior Director of GBAC. Hi, Gavin. Hi, Jeff. We're going to talk about something that's in the news, and I've noticed it, and Gavin, you have as well. We hear about this disturbing information about flesh-eating bacteria, and I have to wonder, what's that all about, and how do we avoid it? Really interesting, Jeff. Um, we are seeing a lot about this flesh-eating bacteria. It's called Vibrio vulnificus, and it occurs when we have floods, uh, especially after hurricanes. Oh. And what we've seen now is the uh, Department of Health has called, has called for a, an abnormal increase. It's actually a surge in cases of this rare bacterial infection. And I think we need to discuss this today of how many cases we've had and some things that, again, from the cleaning industry perspective, that we need to do and do them better. Because, again, it's a rare bacterial infection, but it's a very serious one. So you mentioned the hurricanes and storms, flooding. Where does it actually come from? Okay, so this let's just set the scene at the moment, uh, Jeff. So Florida has reported 64 Vibrio vulnificus infections and 13 deaths this year. That was just in their new report that just came out, which is really interesting. In Florida, this is the first time the number of cases has gone above 50 since 2008. Now, this is a, a, a bacteria. It lives naturally in warm, salty, or even brackish water. So when we see a lot of it after floods and hurricanes, it comes from the same family of bacteria that causes cholera. And I just wanted to emphasize again that the, the way that people are getting infected. Now, these numbers in Florida now, it's everyone that's it's, it's happening in people that are cleaning up after the hurricane. And again, it's a rare disease, but it's a serious disease. Uh, it enters through the skin, through cuts, wounds, abrasions. And what I'm seeing right now, Jeff, and I'm, I really want to help people, is that they're not wearing the right personal protective equipment. And maybe they don't even know that you know soap and water and even there's some disinfectants that, that they can really help. So there's no real way to know if it's there, if you get it until you see an infection on your skin? Yeah, it, it, it is a good question, Jeff, because, um, again, it's a, a mild case of vibriosis is what we call this disease. Looks like you could have chills, fever, uh, diarrhea, you could have some stomach pain, possibly vomiting. And usually people get sick within the first day of exposure to this bacteria. Now, most people would might, might relate this bacteria to, say, um, oysters or undercooked seafood but it can also infect you through skin wounds. Um, and those skin wounds that are typically infected with Vibrio vulnificus, you get blisters, abscesses, and ulcers. And what we commonly call, call this as a flesh-eating infection because it creates what's called necrotizing fasciitis, where that skin gets eaten away, the muscles, the nerves, the fat, the blood vessels around the affected wound. And in really severe cases, Jeff, it causes septicemia, uh, and it can lead to sepsis. Again, we, we know how serious sepsis is where, that, where the infection gets into the bloodstream. We also know that from wound infections, 25% of people can die. And we really want to get the message out there, Jeff, that again, it's going to be more common for those that within those underlying health conditions where it'll be serious, such as those with liver disease, uh, cancer, diabetes, HIV, or any other diseases that suppress the immune system. But right now, it's all about wearing proper, appropriate personal protective equipment. Okay, so we should do that, obviously. You mentioned the storm cleanup. That has to happen. There's no stopping the cleanup. What about disinfectants and other things that we should know in the industry? Really important, Jeff. Uh, Vibrio vulnificus is a bacteria. Again, it's like the like the cholera. It's very comes from the same family as the cholera bacteria. So we know a lot about it. We know soap and water is effective. We know it's susceptible to say uh, two percent phenol, uh, one percent sodium hypochlorite like bleach, uh, four percent formaldehyde. 70% uh, ethanol or 70% propanol, you know, what we see in hand sanitizers, will actually uh, kill this bacteria. 2% uh, parasitic acid and about 3% hydrogen peroxide. So again, if you're going to use cleaning products or disinfectants, you need to read the label and, and look for uh, those active ingredients on the label. But more importantly, Jeff, 
the only way to prevent Vibrio infection is to avoid exposure. And what I'm seeing on TV now, especially from Florida, is people wearing shorts, T-shirts, um, sandals, inappropriate footwear. So I want to just emphasize to everyone, if you have a skin wound, it could be an, a, an abrasion, a cut, even a new tattoo or, or piercing, Cover that area with a waterproof bandages. So those waterproof bandages are available at Walgreens, CVS. Most supermarkets have them. If you're exposed to that salt water, that brackish water, that you know those flood waters from, say, a hurricane, you need to wash your hands and any cuts thoroughly with soap and water after being exposed to that water. Now, if you have to go into water, so most of the people, we're seeing all these infections in people that are cleaning up their homes after the hurricane, you need to wear clothes and shoes that protect your skin and pr especially protect those cuts and wounds from those floodwaters. So again, you know, I know it's hot down there. I know it's humid, but again, cover up that skin, guys, and use lots of soap and water to, to really protect your hands and those cuts and abrasions that you're getting as you clean up your homes. Yeah, I was just thinking that it's Florida and people wear shorts and shirts, sandals. So what an issue this could be for those cleaning up, but hopefully they'll listen and properly protect themselves from this issue. Anything else to add, Gavin? Uh, I think the fact that we're just that Florida has now reported 60, again, 64 Vibrio vulnificus infections. They've had 13 deaths so far this year. It's way above a normal year. It's happening in all those people that are cleaning up their homes after the category four hurricane in and it's really important that we do it. We, we have to clean up our homes, but we do it safely. Yeah. Vibrio what? Volnificus. Good for you, Gavin. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff.